Okay, so on to adding and subtracting uh, rational expressions. So remember, just like adding and subtracting rational expressions is, you know, really the same thing as just like adding and subtracting fractions. Just understand that we have rational function, rational expressions. We're going to have, you know, a um, a polynomial in the numerator as well as possibly in the denominator. So just a quick little review on adding and subtracting fractions. You know, if I have one um, one fifth plus two fifths, since they have the same common denominator, we just add the numerator and keep the denominator, right? However, if I have one half plus one third, you see that these do not have the same denominator. So what I need to do is I need to obtain a common multi a common denominator. And the common denominator of two and three is going to be their product, which is six, right? Because two and three both divide into six. So to get this to be six, I need to multiply by three. And whatever, remember, do you have to produce equivalent equ fractions? So therefore, I need to multiply by three over three. And then to get three to be a six, I need to multiply by two over two. So what this produces now is a three over six plus two over six, which equals a five over six. Now, quick little point um, as well is just remember that not always do you want to multiply them to get common denominators. So for instance, if I had one over two plus one over six. Well, notice here, these do, um, these have a common denominator of six. You don't want to multiply two times six to give you 12. It works for two and three, but it doesn't work for all of them. You can see that these share the common denominator of six. So all I need to do in this example would be multiply by three over three. And therefore, I would have a final answer of three to over one, that would be six. So therefore, three, three plus one is four over six. And then also, I guess we eh, ran out of space here. Remember, we can always simplify our result. So four over six can be simplified to two thirds, which would be my simplified expression. Okay. So anyways, let's get into that because now the polynomials here is, or the rational expressions can get a little bit more confusing than that, right? Um, but at least we have the basics. So the first example is pretty lovely because you can see that they share the same denominators. Um, and so what I'm going to do in this case, then I'm just going to write the numerator as 2x plus 1 plus x over the common denominator of 3x plus 1. And now all I need to do is add the 2x and the x, which gives me 3x. So I have um, 3x plus 1 divided by 3x plus 1. And what we notice in this case is by the division property, this simplifies to one. Now, um, that's not always going to work, but what we can do is a lot of times, you know, the idea here is to obtain common denominators, apply the operation, and then to go ahead and, you know, simplify our result. Um, one thing we could also talk about is talk about the restrictions for the values that you cannot have for x, for meaning x cannot represent a certain value. Like, for instance, x cannot represent negative one-third in this case, but we've already kind of talked about domain restrictions, so I'm not going to um, work on that. I'm just going to work, work on practicing the operations. Um, in this one, you can see that x plus 1 and x plus 4 do not have any common uh, denominators, right? So I need to obtain a common denominator. And it kind of gets a little confusing when you think about, you know, what are the common denominators? Like 2 and 3, the common denominators are, you know, 2 times 3, which is 6. But what common denominators does x plus 1 and x plus 4 really have in common? And, you know, you think about that, like with numbers, you can kind of just like, you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, or 8, 10, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, you know, oh, 12. But you can't, you know, really do that with the polynomials. So the easiest way to kind of, you know, understand this is look into, well, if I just multiply them, that's going to give me my common, that's going to give me a common denominator, which would be their product. Now, just remember you multiply the numerator and the denominator. Don't forget to do that because you have to make sure that you are producing um, equivalent fractions. Because if you don't do that, then you're not going to have the same um, value in the fractions. So over here, I'm going to multiply by x minus 1. x plus 1, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this out. Um, now, I'm going to write this out with the common numerator or denominator, which is x plus 4 times x plus 1. Do you guys see how the denominators are exactly the same? So therefore, over here, I'm going to have x plus 4 times x minus 2 minus 4 times x plus 1. And that's going to be all over my product of x plus 4 times x plus 1. Now, 
Typically, when we're working on this, we don't really care for you to simplify the denominator. We can write this as a simplified, but at least in you know my class and a lot of books, they just allow you to leave this as the common, um, common denominator in factored form. Whereas the numerator, we like to have that simplified. And it doesn't really matter. It really depends on the question or your you know teacher or professor and what they are expecting from you. So I will simplify the numerator and the denominator, but you know, I usually just allow my students, and usually when I'm doing work in class, I'll leave the denominator simplified uh, or factored. But anyways, let's go and fact. Let's go and multiply this. So again, just uh, we can use FOIL, right? So um, x times x is x squared, and therefore we have x times negative two is negative two x. Four times x is. Oh, let's just write out. I got room. I got time. And then four times negative two is negative eight. Now, in this case, remember when you're applying distributive property, make sure you remember you're multiplying by a negative four, okay? So therefore, that's a negative four x, and that's a negative four. Okay. And therefore, we can write this in factored form, and now we can do distributive property here. Now, hopefully, you are pretty good with distributive property or FOIL, and you can get this result um, without me showing my step-by-step. -step. But here, we can see that some terms to, you know, subtract out. Rather than combining like terms, which I could have done here, and then recombine terms, you can see here the 4x minus 4x, that's going to go to 0. Uh, we have negative 8 minus 4, which is negative 12. So my final answer here is going to be x squared minus 2x, negative 8 minus 4, you owe me $8, you borrow 4 more, so now you owe me $12. And that's going to be all over, let's multiply this, um, actually we want to leave this, let me see here, 4, 2, 6 and 4, yeah this is not going to be factorable. But it is important, it is helpful sometimes to, it actually, not sometimes, it is important to leave this in factorable form to see if this can be factored at all. Right, so if you could simplify this even further, but I cannot factor x squared minus two x minus twelve. There's no no two numbers that multiply to give me negative twelve that add to give me negative two. But some problems they do have that um, embedded in there. So I'm just going to rewrite this now as x squared plus five x plus one. Okay. Um, all right. In the next example, now this one hopefully I have sparked your interest in saying nobody wants to multiply all of these to get your common denominator. Nobody should want to do that, all right? You could do that though. That will give you a common denominator. But I mean, I think in math, we're trying to make things simple, not more difficult. So we see a trinomial and immediately when we see a trinomial, we want to say, let's factor the trinomial, see what that gives us. So what two numbers multiply to give you negative six, add to give you a positive one. That factors down into a x minus two, no, a x, yeah, minus 2 times a x plus 3. Okay, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And then we have here is a um, two, 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 x times x is x squared. So we have negative 6. Sorry, negative 6. This becomes a negative 2. That's a positive 3. Cool. All right, and then this, we can factor this one down too. This becomes a x minus 2 times a x plus two. Okay, so now we basically gotta take, all right, so what do they have in common? What do they don't have in common? All right, let's break this up. So LCD, they all have in common, or they all need to have in common, a x minus two, a, this one has an x plus two, nothing else has an x plus two, so they need to have an x plus two, and then they also need to have a x plus three. Right, so that is everything they need to have in common. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, um, I'm going to get to the common denominator. So you can see here, and this is gonna be a little bit of writing, creative writing here, because I didn't really give myself enough space. So if I need to get this to have this LCD, I need to multiply it by an X plus two. So let me pick, you know, let's do brown, blue. So therefore I'm gonna multiply this times a X plus two. But remember to multiply the numerator and the denominator. This exam, this middle term only has a x minus two. So I need this to have a x plus two and a x plus three. And multiply this by x plus two, x plus three. 
And I know that doesn't work with the multiply and kind of looks weird there. Um, over here, I have an x minus 2, x plus 2, but I need to multiply this by a x plus 3 and then an x plus 3 on the top. Okay, so hopefully you can see though that now each of these denominators all have the common denominator. So now what I'm gonna do is just write the product that I have here. Now really, x plus two times one, I'm just gonna write that as x plus two. So I have an x plus two minus, be careful, notice that's a negative, that negative can be attached to that three, minus a three times x plus two times an x plus three plus a two times x plus three. And again, that is going to be all over our common denominator of x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. All right, so now here I got a little fun. I was like, eh, I'll multiply this out. I'm not going to spend my time multiplying this out. I'm going to leave this in factored form. But I do need to multiply this out. Now, should I distribute to 3 or multiply the two binomials? I'm going to multiply these two binomials um, and then distribute to 3. So I'm going to work with two simplifying processes. So I'll have x plus 2 minus 3. I'm going to do this in my head here. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. x times 2 is 2x. 3x plus 2x is 5x. 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm going to have a x squared. Actually, I'm going to have to do this twice. x squared, let's see, plus 5x, uh, plus 6. And that's going to be plus a 2x plus 6. All right, and that's all going to be over my LCD. <laughs> be a little lazy here. Instead of rewriting that, I'll rewrite it from my last time. Um, now let's go ahead and distribute. Jeez, oh man, I didn't really think about all these steps I'm going to have. Uh, x plus 2 minus, now let's distribute this 3x. So a negative 3x squared minus, sorry, that's a negative 3 times 5x. So that's a negative 15x minus 18 plus 2x plus 6. Notice these are not in the parentheses, so I'm not multiplying these by 3. All right, and then that's, again, all over my LCD, which is that. And then let's write this for the final last time. All right, so let's combine all our terms. So we can see we have a negative 3x squared, so I'm going to write this in descending order. So negative 3x squared, and then all my x squareds, um, oh, that, oh, I'm sorry, all my x's, so I'm going to have x plus 2x is 3x, and then minus 15x, so that's going to be a negative 12x. And then I'm going to have a 2 plus 6 is 8, plus negative 18 is going to be a negative 10. All right. Um, now, there is not any factorable times, and therefore then I'm going to check here. Um, yeah, I think this might be factorable. Crap. Maybe, maybe not. Let's check it. So therefore, my LCD is x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. All right, let's check to see if this is factorable. So I'm going to factor out a negative here. And be 3x squared minus 12x plus 12x plus 10. All right, using the AC method, 3 times 10 is going to be 30 and then 12. So is there any two numbers that multiply to give me 30, add to give me 12? So the numbers that multiply to give me 30, that would be um, 6 and 5. Nope, so 6 and 5 would be close, um, but 15 and 2. So anyways, that's not going to be factorable. So cool, that is going to be my final answer. So this is non-factorable. I was just checking to see on the AC method. So that would be my simplified product. So um, just again, kind of recap here that when we're looking into, you know, working with these, uh, sorry about that, um, you know, make sure you're getting common factors, okay? And just like I did with the fractions, when they have the same, it's easy. Combine the numerators, keep the denominator. When they're two different, right, multiply to get the common denominator. But be careful, a lot of times they have common denominator, they have denominators in common. So that's why it's important to, you know, factor them and then see what they need to, what you need to multiply to get to that. And... Um, then it really just comes into a lot of little simplifying, you know, here in class to get everything to be the same. So um, there you go. Now let's go ahead and move on to multiplying and dividing.